talk about computer dating. I've been doing therapy for 38 years and of course a lot of people that come to therapy are single people who are lonely and who want somebody. And uh, initially when I came up uh, as a therapist, what you advise people is find activities that you like, go to a church that you like, and, be in and allow yourself to be friendly and be interested and so on. And learn how to be assertive and introduce yourself and, and, and so on. Be active. And that's st those are still ways that people meet other people. And in those days, the most common way that someone met someone that turned out to be a lover or a spouse was at church or at work. But then computer dating showed up. And I love computer dating. I love it that people don't have to pretend that I'm really into rowing. You know, no, I actually want a partner. And I love it that people can say what kind of partner they want. There are, there are sites you can go on, Ashley Madison and so on, where you just want to hook up. Okay, people want to hook up. They can honestly just say, I want to hook up. But most sites are, I want somebody that can be a romantic partner. And it challenges us to be aware of ourselves and to present ourselves as we are. And it challenges us to have, go through a series of steps of getting to know someone, each step designed to reveal who we are and to connect with who they are. And so there's the exchange of profiles, there's the winks, and then there's a little bit of email, and then there might be a phone exchange, and then there's the 10 or 15 minute meeting or maybe a longer meeting in a coffee shop. And then there's the first date, the second date, and so on. And computer dating, just like all other dating, is filled with a lot of urban legends and a lot of standard things. Never have sex until you've been dating for at least three months. Um, uh, you know, wear clothes that make you look skinny. It's just on and on and on and on like that. <laughs> and there's love coaches that you can hire that will help you get a photo and help you do a profile. And, and it's related to really as a competitive activity, you know, like uh, dancing with the stars. You know, <laughs> I want to make it to the top. Well, sure, there are lots of uh, principles that are involved. You know, if as a guy, you want to be, you want to be present and you want to be balanced. Generally, our nervous systems are oriented towards normal. By normal, it's something that doesn't alarm another person. In fact, be beautiful people are often people that are called, that have qualities called supernormal. Supernormal meaning that they'll have you know, regular blue eyes, but the blue eyes will be just a little bit bigger or more radiant, or their cheekbones a little bit far out, or their breasts a little bit more prominent. And that tends to draw, draw attention, uh, tends to draw sexual attention. Um, it tends to make us uh, think in terms of beauty and so on. So there's, there's the visuals. And it's very true that when men are looking at visuals, they want an erotic component. And so a woman that puts out a, a photo that has no eroticism in it is going to get less interest. And women want a guy that's self-sufficient and can take care of himself. So a guy who presents himself as somebody that can't maintain himself in his own life, financially or physically, is going to be less attracted to her. And, and so a, a lot of the principles around here are take care of yourself. Be a five-star candidate. If you're an alcoholic, get into recovery. If you're letting your body go, get into training. You know, if you have horrible outfits, get a friend, go shopping and have good outfits. If you're lax about your grooming, groom. I mean, just let's, let's be realistic here. We exist in a social contact. And if there's something that stands out as alarming, it'll push somebody else away. But beyond that, what you do is recognize that there's these series of steps, and it's a lot of work. One woman that was doing computer dating, who is happily married at this particular point, said, I worked as hard on this as I did on my master's thesis. And I think that was a... That was a wonderful analogy. And I tell people that. It's going to be a lot of work. It's hard to go over these profiles and to make a profile and then talk to people and go back and forth and so on. And it's really wonderful to do it with a friend. It's especially wonderful to do it with a woman friend. And this is true for men and for women. Now, sorry guys, but women tend to be better at supporting this process than guys do. So if you have a woman friend that you're not romantically involved with, get her to help you with it. 
And women, get other women to help you with it. Some women have done it with their daughters and their sisters and their best friends. And I think that's just beautiful. And then you relax and make it a process. It's, it's hard. Sometimes it's embarrassing. It's hard when someone says no. It's hard when you don't want to say no to another person. You have to meet all those demons. And you have to be honest and fair with yourself and with another person about that. If I don't want to see somebody again, give them a clear message. If they don't want to see me, I need to allow them that and allow myself to continue with the process. And then what computer dating does is it creates these initial relationships where people are honest about what they want. We want to have a relationship that's going to develop and improve. And then it goes through the same steps that all of the relationships go to. Computer dating is wonderful. And I recommend it. If you're lonely, go online. Start the process. If you have a girlfriend that you can do it with, get her to help you. Have some fun with it. And that maximizes your possibilities, I think, of finding the kind of love that you want in this world. Mm -hmm.